Mike check one two. It's the Y two K collector here with a quick late night thought. Um, we're in the middle of this major thunderstorm, so it's a little hard to sleep. And I'm in my in my game room, or it's a combination of a game room and cre cre creative room. Um, but anyway, I'm in here sorting through some of my DS games, and I was thinking about just the hobby of game collecting, right? Um, and what it all entails. Um, obviously, you know, we buy games to play them, you know, check them out, um, you know, enjoy the experience of the game, whatever the game may have to offer, regardless of the system, the console, um, the genre. And I think that, um, you know, when we start thinking about the hobby of video games, what does it all entail? Is it only playing video games? Um, is it the thrill of getting that game that you want? Um, is it the thr thrill of, um, you know, sharing the experience with a friend? Um, being able to let one of your friends borrow the game? I think there's so much that goes into this hobby. And, and, it's, and it's just, I think the thing that I love about it is that there's so many ways that you can enjoy it. There's so many enjoyable things about it um, that I just try not to think about it in a in a one dimensional way. I've had fun buying games. I've had fun playing games. I've had fun selling games. Um, you know, I've had fun sharing games. I've had fun talking about games. That's a big part of the reason why I started the channel. And, um, you know, I'm just the type of person that I'm going to enjoy the hobby and um, in every way available to me. Some people, all they want to do is play the games. Some people are resellers. All they want to do is buy the games and resell them. Maybe they don't spend too much time playing them. Maybe some people only play games just so they can talk about them. But regardless of what you do, um, as long as you're getting enjoyment and fulfillment out of the hobby, then that's really all that matters. I think everything else is noise and um, I think you should enjoy the hobby for what it means to you. Now, I was uh, watching the news early this morning and also this afternoon, and it, it, it was kind of funny because, you know, just in the regular six o'clock news, they're talking about Nintendo and the Switch, and they're talking about how Nintendo um, is starting to feel pressure, I guess, sales pressure, to release a new system because the momentum of the switch has began to slow down and i think i mentioned this the other day um i think in one of my last videos i mentioned you know now might not be the best time to buy nintendo switch games because the prices are going down and um and what i meant when i said that was that i think that we're gonna start to see the switch bottom out as nintendo transitions into their next console now as far as the Switch games go, it's hard to determine what the values will be because suppose the new console has reverse compatibility and suppose you can play Switch games like older Switch games on the new console. It's very likely that Nintendo would do something like that considering how many Switch games there are. Now, what that would mean for like, like the Switch hardware... I mean, I don't know. It would probably render this useless. I mean, if the new console can play Switch games, so who knows if they'll do that and just kind of like, you know, eliminate the need for these altogether. But I think it's a, a very, very interesting time in gaming because what new experience can Nintendo offer, right, that some of the newer consoles can't offer? The one thing that I will, that I'd like to say that I hope we see is I hope, and, and I think Nintendo is capable of this because I feel like in some ways they're, they're the pioneers of like interactive gaming. I, I feel like they lead the way in interactive gaming. Like, yes, I know there's the Quest and I know there's the, the Oculus and, um, you know, there's virtual reality with like the PlayStation and stuff like that. But I think Nintendo historically has done interactive gaming the best. And so what I'm hoping that we'll see in the new console is something far more interactive. Maybe something, maybe goggles, maybe glasses, maybe something that we put on our, you know, over our eyes, maybe a, a helmet that we put on 
that fully immerses us into the games that we're playing. Maybe, um, you know, maybe Nintendo will come out with some new gloves and maybe the gloves will be able to uh, provide you with more of an interactive feeling with the virtual reality. Maybe you'll have, maybe it'll come with virtual reality gloves and virtual reality boots and a helmet uh, that'll allow you to really get in the game. Um, you know, I think, I mean, now, while that all sounds wildly expensive, um, I think it's something that Nintendo could pull off. Would it be a very expensive system? Maybe, but if they could scale the technology and and get it, you know, down to where, you know, the average consumer can afford it, I think that that would be something that would be worth buying. Um, that's just me. Now, of course, you know, we probably won't see something like that. It'll probably be a, a, a better version or maybe a, a more powerful system. I mean, what are they going to do? They can't add more Wi-Fi. They can't add more. They, they just can't add more any more trinkety features. They, they, they The new system would have to have some real cool features. And I feel like for Nintendo, really, the next thing is VR. They really got to dive, I think, deep into that virtual reality space um, with the new console to really kind of spark something new and, and give, um, you know, gamers a new experience. Um, I really love what the Switch has done. It's the the next best-selling console after the DS. Um, and I didn't even realize that the DS was Nintendo's best-selling console. But yeah, it is Nintendo's best-selling console. And the Switch is right behind it. And so whatever Nintendo has in store to replace, you know, what what's going to be an iconic console, like say what you want, 20 years from now, when people think back to the pandemic and what they were doing and the games they were playing, a lot of people are going to think about the Nintendo Switch. And behind the Switch, a lot of people are going to think about all of the retro games that they turned back to. There's Sega Genesis games, there's Super Nintendo games, all of that stuff. You know, GameCube, if you grew up with a GameCube or N64, how many people ran and grabbed an N64 uh, during the pandemic, right? Or a Super Nintendo. And I think like 20 years from now, a lot, a whole lot of the nostalgia, just because people were locked up for pretty much two years, unable to go where they wanted to. And a lot of that generation was playing the Switch. And I think for that reason, when that nostalgia factor, when that nostalgia boomerang comes back around 15, 18 years from now, um, I think that's where we'll really start to see the Nintendo Switch shine and um, a lot of the nostalgia for the console. But as for now, looking, you know, looking into closer into the closer future or the nearer future, um, I'm just really, really interested to see what Nintendo does with the next console. And um, regardless of what they do, I mean, hopefully it's something that the public can enjoy. You know, we all get a lot of enjoyment from games, like I said. And regardless of how you enjoy this space, like I said, if you if you if you get enjoyment of of going out and hunting for games, uh, going to conventions and meeting people, playing games, sharing games, talking about games, whatever it is for you, just enjoy it, man, because it's it's games at the end of the day. And it's really not that serious. Um, and uh, hopefully um, the hobby is you, you're getting out of the hobby what you want from it. Uh, and those are just some late night thoughts from me here randomly. Again, I am the Y2K collector. Um, hopefully you're staying dry. Take it easy.